Hey, Blender Bob here. Today I'm going to show you how to make leaves move. If you take a good look at the Lion King, you will see that none of the plants are moving, except if they are in foreground or there's an interaction with the animals. Moving plants is not that difficult, actually. It's just that it takes an awful lot of memory, and on the scale of Lion King, it would be completely crazy. Everywhere I worked in my career, when we needed plants, it was always the same solution, speed tree. It's designed to generate plans for either the VFX or the gaming industry, low res, high res, medium res, and they have a huge library of plans. In the VFX world, speed tree is the way to go. I know there are some very cool plugins to do trees in Blender, I never tried any of them, but uh, feel free to check them out. And please tell me which ones are good in the comments. This is a bush that comes from speed tree, and it looks very nice. Now, if you want to animate it in speed tree, what you do is you export it with a cache, a PC2 cache. And if you want to apply it in Blender, this is what you do. You just go mesh cache, you select the PC2, you link it to your cache, and here you go. You got an animated tree. Simple, right? The problem is the cache for this tree is 1.5 gigabyte and that's only for 300 frames. So imagine if you have an entire forest like in Lion King. So when they did Lion King, they didn't ask Blender Bob about an alternate solution. Okay, Blender Bob didn't exist when they did Lion King and it wasn't even done in Blender, but hey, whatever. The Lion King stuff is just a clickbait. So the idea is to go in vertex mode and to select all the vertices that have a leaf shader on them. So you select your shader, you go select, you select the other shader for the leaves, select, and then you go right here and you create a group, a vertex group. Then you assign all these vertices in it. We can rename it, let's call it leaves. All right, and just to test it, make sure everything is okay, we're just gonna deselect and reselect Everything is good, all right. Now we're gonna add a displacement modifier, not a shader, a modifier. Let's reduce the intensity because the tree just blew up. And in vertex group, we're gonna add the group we just created, leaves. Press new to assign a new texture to it. Massive, massive, massive grab, whatever that's called. It works very well. And now you play with the parameters until you get something to your liking. You may have to do a bunch of tests here. Viewport animation render will give you a good idea very fast. There are no secret recipes here. It depends on the scale of your scene and it depends on the effect you want to have. So now the leaves are displaced, but they're not moving, so we need to animate them. And what we're going to do is to create an empty node, and this empty node is going to drive the animation. Back in the modifier, in coordinates, you choose object and you pick your empty. Now all you need to do is to keyframe it from whatever direction to whatever direction and your leaves are gonna move. Again, a little bit of testing to see if it's great, if it's too fast, if it's too slow, and then you're in business. Okay, so let's import another tree. So what happens if we just copy the modifier from one object to another? So we're gonna select uh, the second one, then the first one, control L, and we're gonna link the modifiers. Is it working? It's working, but the problem is that the entire tree is moving, not just the leaves. The reason is we don't have a leaf vertex group like we did for the first tree. So we're just gonna create one for this one and assign it to the displacement modifier. If it's red like that, it's because it's looking for the old one. So here we go, leaves two, and now we got both trees moving. Don't forget to turn off the display for the modifiers, all of them, otherwise it's gonna be quite painful when you move around the time slider. So when you make trees, you want to make sure that the leaves are actual geometry, not just a plane with a transparency map on it. It's going to look better, it's going to distort better, because otherwise it's just going to twist in a weird way. You can see clip 1A for more details, and also because of this. If you're an EV, you may run into this problem where everything is opaque like this, so you have to change the blend mode to alpha blend, and now you have this, but the shadow you get is from actually the entire plane, not just the transparency of the leaves. So you need to change the shadow mask to alpha hash or alpha clip. It's more problematic if you go to cycles. You will see after a certain level of depth, everything will become black. So you won't see the transparency anymore. And that's because of the path rays, the way it goes. You need to tell it how deep you want it to go. So you change the transparency here and the light path and the higher you make it, the more transparency you will get. But that will impact the rendering time, it will make it much slower. And the thing is, if you have a tree, you don't know how many levels you need. So you cannot put this at like 2000, the rendering time is gonna be completely insane and completely crazy. That's why it's better to use actual geometry, you will not get this problem. So now you know how to make a leaf move in a tree in a very fast, efficient and light way to do it without any caches or anything. And uh, you better use it because if you give me a blender file that doesn't have leaves moving, 
You're gonna do push-ups. Okay, bye.